In pop culture, paleontologists are mainly portrayed as these white bearded adventurers that are only interested in dinosaurs. But this is pretty much like saying that biologists are only interested in whales, which is of course nonsense. In reality, paleontology is a lot more diverse than it is portrayed in the movies. It can be characterized as a study of life on our planet, which makes it a combination of geology as the study of the past of our planet and biology as the study of life. So essentially every question asked in biology can also be asked in paleontology simply by shifting the focus from the present to the past. Take one of my current research projects as an example. I study the interactions between the environment and organism, which is called ecology or with a focus on the past, paleoecology. A typical example ecologists ask is why are some organisms more common than others? For example, why are there more plants than dogs? But to answer this question, we first have to know how many of these organisms are there. In the present, this is pretty straightforward to answer. We just count how many are there. For example, in this video, there are two dogs and 10 plants. However, in the past, this gets really, really tricky to answer. This is because of a process called fossilization, which summarizes all physical and chemical processes that turn a dead organism into a fossil. The thing with fossilization is that it strongly depends on the environmental condition and the type of dead organism. I try to understand how fossilization alters our perception of commonness. Most interestingly, in what cases is the most common fossil actually the most common organism? And if it is not, how does this alter our perception of the ecology of the past? For this, I look at two factors that contribute to fossilization. The first is the robustness of the dead organism, be it bones, shells or leaves. More robust organisms are less likely to break or to be disintegrated. This increases the chance of them to turn into fossils. So the chance of an organism to be preserved depends on whether it has a skeleton or a shell and how robust it is. The second is called speed of burial and refers to how fast the organism is covered by sand or mud. If it is covered very fast, scavengers have a harder time getting to it and there's less oxygen available for its decay. This is pretty much the same idea as behind canned food. If it is covered, it will last longer. So environments with fast burial increase the chances of good preservation. Using mathematical models of both robustness and speed of burial, I try to identify situations where the most common fossil also reflects the most common organism. So for the past, we cannot tell whether there were more dogs than plants or vice versa, simply because plants rot very fast, whereas dogs have a lot of hard parts like teeth and bones that are fossilized more easily. Comparing the commonness of fossils only makes sense if the environment in which the organism died is similar and the, the organism itself is equally robust. So you see, there's a lot more to paleontology than just dinosaurs.